All of the images you are about to see on the large screen will be generated by what's in that bag. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Millions of people bought a Mac because it did things that no other computer could do. It really got people excited to, this is a personal computer like none other before. And for many years, Apple got away from that. It forgot how to be different. The original Mac is an impossible act to follow. But I think what, what we can do is, is one benefit from the philosophy that was really the foundation for the original Macintosh. This product came to be because the exec staff said, stop, let's focus on one thing, making the best personal computer, a computer that Macintosh customers will truly love. Well, what computer would the Jetsons have had? That's the perfect way of capturing the problem, which was, it was like the future yesterday. It defined simplicity, you know, elegance, incredible ease of use, tremendous performance, and great value. This particular machine really delivers on that promise. It makes you feel uh, a lot like you felt when you first sat down to use your Macintosh. When we have this, this wealth of creativity that cross our campuses, that cross our schools in K through 12. What we want to do is to unleash that capability. The team was a hand-picked team from around the world. It's a remarkable place to be as a designer. There's one company where this group could exist, and that's unquestionably Apple. That's what gets me really jazzed, and gets me up in the morning, is, is coming in every day and knowing, you know, I'm working with a world-class team to build the best products in the world. Wow, that's, that's some look, that's some box. My first reaction was, my gosh, what is that? People have to use their hands to describe it. They struggle to find words to describe it. It's the first time we've seen something in our industry that wasn't a uh, beige box. Just imagine what's gonna happen the first time somebody gets one of these home. I'm gonna pull this thing out, I'm gonna pick it up, and it's this gorgeous new shape. The surface as well is totally seductive. I mean, it's a lovely thing to touch and to hold. This cool keyboard with translucent keycaps. The connectors are, are translucent. I'm gonna pull out this, this exciting new mouse. It looks like no other mouse you've ever seen before. You turn it on and it comes alive. It's always changing, it's always moving. And before you know it, in the first five minutes of opening the box, you're already in love with this thing. I'd like to play with one, I want to see one, I want to see what it'll do, I want to put it through its paces. But then you look a little farther and you say, holy smokes, look at the capabilities of this machine. This inside is the heart of the lion. I mean, this thing screams. This is not last year's product rehashed, this is next year's product delivered today. A lot of power, a lot of features. Uh, it's attractive, it's exciting, and it's well-priced. That's what customers are looking for. We're going to sell tons of them, and, and I think this is the first product that will make PC buyers switch to Mac. You see shock and recognition that, my God, Apple wasn't sitting back in this affordable consumer space. They truly have a great idea here. The fact that the Apple name is now, once again, going to stand for every man, everybody, mass market, I think is terrific news for all of us. We talk internally. Will we have enough product to take care of the demand? I'd like the first one off the production line. I, I will stand there at the end of the production line when the first one comes off. Well, consumers have been loyal. They've been patient. They've been frustrated. They've been zealots. Okay. Well, it's going to show it paid off waiting. For those of you that think When we set out to design the new iMac, there definitely was a tendency for us to be evolutionary. But one of the things that was great about the original iMac was that it was so revolutionary. So the new iMac had to be revolutionary too. The easy part was knowing that we were going to use a flat panel display. The hard part was trying to figure out how. Our solution appears to defy gravity. It's just this very simple, 
pure frame that appears to just float in space. When you look at it now, it seems so simple, it seems so obvious. And yet again, you know, as usual, the simplest, most efficient solution has been the most elusive. This is an iMac on steroids. It has up to an 800 megahertz G4 chip with Velocity Engine, NVIDIA GeForce 2MX graphics, up to one gigabyte of memory, 60 gigabytes of hard drive space, and your choice of a CDRW, Combo, or Super Drive. The new iMac is the first computer built from the ground up to be the ultimate engine for your digital lifestyle. It has a powerful new operating system and the world's easiest to use applications iTunes for managing all your music, iMovie for making your own movies, iDVD for creating and burning DVDs, and now iPhoto, the world's coolest digital photography software. iPhoto is a breakthrough in digital photography. It's the first software written to make it easy for you to import all your pictures into the computer, organize thousands of them and find them in a snap, eliminate red eye, and then share them with your family and friends via print, the web, and even a professionally bound book. Apple is the only company that makes the hardware, the operating system, and the software, all completely integrated with Apple's legendary ease of use. This is Sarah. See, she has the, the duck in between her, her feet. Apple is introducing the iPhoto, and I'm introducing Sarah. They're both new little babies. I'm really impressed with what iPhoto can do. It was like magic to have the camera sitting there and just downloading everything right into the computer and to be able to bring up a whole roll and then have all these different ways to, you know, to package it, so to speak. I mean, I love the, um, the little um, the photo book. I mean, that actually is, is what I'm most excited about. I think the sensibility is very, very tender and very beautiful. And it is going to be the family photo album in the future to be able to create your own little books like that. Oh, how gorgeous is that? I want one immediately. I won't leave without one. The way that iPod and iTunes work together is amazing. I think iTunes and the iPod are perfect examples of, of organic technology. Um, they work with you. You plug the iPod in and you get a replica of what is on your desktop for you to take with you anywhere you please. And it reminds me of something out of 2001 A Space Odyssey or even beyond that, it's, it's, it's perfect. And with iTunes, iMovie, iDVD, and now iPhoto, the digital hub seems pretty much complete. I was kind of a boy scientist, so I was always totally convinced that the cinema would be electronic. This little machine I'm looking at is the, uh, uh, the home base of a media factory, and all it needs are a number of pieces of hardware a still camera, the iPod, a, a digital a moving camera or camcorder. You could make a book, you could, you could make a presentation, you could make a slideshow. You could make a feature film on this. Why not? Tell the story of your life with stills and things you shoot with your digital camera. There's no limitation. Sooner or later, someone with these tools is going to make a great masterpiece. It's one thing to, to solve design problems. It, it, it's much, much harder to, to give a, a personality, to give, give, give life to a product. Um, I mean, it, it's much harder, but I mean, it's infinitely more satisfying. Um, and, and I think the new, I think the new iMac has that. It looks like it's a face smiling at you, and it's with this little mouth down here. Incredible. So you're going to leave this here, right? I'm a sucker for things that look really futuristic, and this is about as futuristic as you're going to get. 
It's beautiful. I look at something like this, I think of, well, I want three million of them so I can put them, you know, with three million young people. just the ultimate consumer product that is so integrated, that's so simple to use. The fact that the iMac is a G5 processor, yet we've done it in a design that makes it the world's thinnest desktop, only two inches thick, and quieter than the previous iMac, to me, is just outstanding. The similarities between the iPod and iMac really stem from, from they're both designed with exactly the same approach, to evolve a solution until it seems just completely inevitable, completely essential. The iMac is so uncluttered, it's so quiet and serene, it just lets you do the stuff that you want to do. G5 really shines is when you use it in iLife. When you actually manage your photos, you manage your videos, you manage your music, all that stuff really just screams with the G5 processor. It's really made to make iLife really go. Everybody, everybody, let's get into it. Get stupid, come on, get started, come on, get started, get started. The iMac is amazing. The new iMac is even more amazing. Yeah, the new new iMac is even more amazing. If you wanted to do music, do a movie, take pictures, store pictures, surf the internet. Go online and see your friend and Perpignan Young friends with your little eye camera. Garage band, quick time, see movies, DVDs. This is your, this is all you need in the home. You got it right there. This iMac right here. I'm, I'm jealous of the kids today because they have this, this knowledge ahead of, of where I was when I was younger. And I only wish that I could have had this. I genuinely think this is one of our designs that has really clicked, that, that somehow there's a sort of a harmony and a wholeness to the solution that that it just feels really right.
our goals for the first iMac and the goals for this iMac, they've, they've not really changed at all. You know, they're, they're all about trying to create an all-in-one product based on amazing technology, but making it very, very simple. This new iMac really is an evolution of a product that was so right in so many ways when we first released it. The entire front of the new iMac is just dominated by this incredible new 16 by 9 display. We've actually figured out a way of taking the glass right to the very perimeter. It's just display and then no display. That's it. I mean, <laughs> you are just completely consumed by, by that image. There's not a detail there that doesn't need to be there. <laughs> There are no visual interruptions, distractions, there's just no other noise. Everything is about the display and therefore everything is about your content. The first thing you're going to be just blown away with is the display. The displays are a lot bigger. Ten years ago, the original iMac had a 15-inch display. Today, we start at 21 and a half inches and we go all the way to 27 inches. There's a lot more screen real estate there, and with so many more picture elements, there's so much more you can really do with that display. For the 21 and a half inch display, we went to the full 1080p. And for the 27 inch, we went even further than 1080p. We added 78% more pixels to take it well beyond HD. Pixel density like this just doesn't exist on other desktop computers. With that many pixels, you're seeing great detail in photos, you're seeing razor-sharp text, and of course, you're viewing HD content with tremendous clarity. The more pixels you have on the screen, the more light you have to push through them in order to get the same frontal screen brightness for the customer. The latest advancement is to use LED backlight systems. LED technology has the advantage of coming on to full brightness the moment you turn them on, and it has uniform brightness across the entire screen. The new iMac also features IPS technology. That's a very premium class display technology. What you get out of that is very good color consistency and very good display performance, and you get that at every angle. Part of the promise of the all-in-one design is simplicity. And of course, it makes sense to offer a wireless keyboard and mouse, and now we're including it as a standard feature of the new iMac. When you first see the mouse, it could not be any simpler. But I love the way that it scales from being something that is that apparently simple to actually being really remarkably sophisticated. I mean, we have finally figured out how to take the multi-touch technology and implement it on a mouse. It's still a point-and-click mouse but now the entire top surface of the mouse is, is basically it's a multi-touch sensor. This is the smartest mouse we've ever made. There's a chip inside that acts essentially as a brain. As you put your fingers on the top shell, it can determine where they're located, how many you have, and through your gesture, your movement, it can determine what your intent is. You can scroll anywhere on that top surface. You can swipe. It is incredibly intuitive. I mean. You can use it without thought, you know. It's just the way that you would have expected the mouse should have always worked. Outwardly, you can see differences between our new iMac and previous generations. But inside, it's really radically new. Storage, memory, new CPUs, new graphics processors. Really, everything's better and faster in this new iMac. The 27-inch computer with this new quad-core Nehalem processor, it's a real workhorse. Those are workstation-class technologies that are really built in a consumer computer. We're really proud of this iMac, especially in terms of the environment. But the key with the environmental story is it's never over, because as you learn 
how to remove toxins, you change your focus from doing that to how do we build this thing really energy efficient. And not just to meet energy star, but to go way beyond that. We take a life cycle view of the carbon footprint. And you'd find that the customer's use of the computer has the biggest impact on its carbon footprint. And so in this product, we really drove at energy efficiency. And that's where we have a tremendous advantage because we not only build the hardware, but we also create the software. So we're able to really manage power throughout the system extensively. We even power down processors between keystrokes. And I think we're really unique in how far we've pushed that hardware and software technology to do that. With this iMac, we took everything so much further. The displays are bigger, the pixel count is higher, it comes standard with a wireless keyboard and new multi-touch mouse. It features faster graphics, faster processor, more RAM, and more storage. This is truly our best iMac ever. The core ideas, the founding ideas of the iMac are as relevant and as right now as they were you know, with the first one. And so rather than just you know, being consumed by reinvention, this is one of those fantastic opportunities to, to be very clear about what's right and that we don't want to change. So that we can put all of our energy behind improving those aspects of the product that we can make better. And, and that's what this iMac represents. It's, it's a collection of our very best thinking, our, our very best innovation. The Mac enables people to do amazing things. And for many people, it's the most important creative tool that they use. And what we really love doing is making it better. On an iMac, the experience begins with the display. And now we're really proud to introduce the first iMac with the Retina 5K display. With 14.7 million pixels, this goes way beyond HD. It gives the ultimate all-in-one computer the ultimate display. And it means you see incredible detail on a scale that just hasn't been done before on a desktop. We started by moving to an Oxide TFT, or Thin Film Transistor Panel. Oxide TFT is needed to get these many millions of pixels to charge quicker and then stay charged longer. We manufactured an Oxide TFT-based display more precisely than had ever been done before. One of the great results is the vivid brightness you see across the whole screen. Communicating to all of those pixels requires a lot of brain power. In a display, it's called the timing controller, or TCON. The TCON tells every pixel what to do and when to do it. For this new Retina display, a TCON didn't exist that could do the job. We had to create it. This single, incredibly advanced chip is responsible for directing millions of pixels. Whether you're looking at photos, or text, or even editing 4K video, the picture is stunning. We've also improved the contrast ratio, so you'll get brighter whites and darker blacks from any viewing angle. When I'm working on imagery, I need to see the details in it to make accurate judgments of color and exposure, to be able to make it look on screen exactly how it appeared to me when I saw it in reality. For this display to be possible, millions of pixels have to be driven with more energy efficiency. We use power-saving LEDs and organic passivation which enables a clear, accurate signal to be sent to each pixel. This dramatically increases the display's performance and image quality, while actually decreasing its power usage by 30%. Every photograph I shoot, there's so much work to be done before it's really finished. To get there, the tools I use need to be powerful and precise. And now that I've had a chance to experience the sharpness and the resolution and the incredible tonal range in the new iMac, I just can't imagine a better tool for the work I do. With its stunning Retina 5K display and all of this new capability, the new 27-inch iMac is by far the most amazing iMac we've ever built. <laughs>